there. Um, so welcome to School of Education at Loyola Marymount University. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk to you a little bit about our teacher preparation programs and all the various pathways and options you have to complete this. There's a lot of flexibility within our program, which is super exciting. So um, as life changes, maybe your program needs to change with you sometimes. This does happen. So um, we're going to get started with the PowerPoint. Um, let me just introduce myself. I'm Mary Frazier. I'm Director of Admissions and Recruitment for the School of Education. And with me today is Dr. Annette Piwan Hernandez. Hi, Hello. everybody. <laughs> Good to have you. Director of uh, Teacher Preparation Programs uh, in our Student Teaching Pathway. And then with us also is Cheryl Hugo. Hi, everyone. She's our graduate admissions counselor and frequently the one you reach when you're asking questions about our programs. So we're gonna, teacher ed is a little bit complicated in the state of California, not at LMU, but the state of California makes it a little complicated. So um, we're gonna ask that you kind of, uh, if there's a clarifying question, it's a quick question, but we might have you wait until the very end for questions, that'll help us. If we could have you all put yourselves on mute so that there's no distractions of barking dogs and whatnot, that would be great too. And uh, without further ado, I will get started. All right. So teacher preparation is um, my, my, of course, thing is frozen, but teacher preparation is to become an elementary school teacher, a secondary school teacher, which is primary, middle school, and high school, or a special educator um, for students with mild to moderate support needs. And then we also have the bilingual authorization for teaching in uh, second language, be that Spanish, Mandarin, or Cantonese are the three that we offer. Um, and I lost my PowerPoint, didn't I? Let's see what's happening here. I don't know why it's doing that. Let's try that again. It must be a live link. There we go. All right. We can do this. <laughs> Happy first day after the hour change for spring break. Oh, uh, spring forward. All right. So in the School of Education, um, our mission and goals are encouragement, obviously, of lifelong learning. Um, the strong belief system. We ourselves go through a lot of training academic excellence, education of the whole person. It's not just about the course, it's about everything else involved in the field of teaching and in your world, and the promotion, of course, of service and justice for all. Um, these have been our mission and goals for some time now, and we really do incorporate them into everything that we do. Uh, supported by this is our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion something that we've been doing for over 20 years, years now. It's not new to us. Um, unfortunately for society, we're still not there yet. And um, so we keep, we're just, you know, trying to push that envelope a little bit further every year. So we're a learning community committed to social justice, to foster a stronger understanding of social inequities, to reduce institutional barriers, to foster an inclusive culture. And that uh, at the end of the day, every student deserves an inclusive, socially just, and compassionate teacher. This is where we lean to you. Um, few benefits, real quick. You're gonna see lots of benefits throughout, but just some highlights. We have very small class sizes, anywhere from 15 to 25 students. Uh, we have, offer highly individualized attention from admissions to enrollment, to your advisement, to your one-on-one -on -one with your faculty and one-on-one -on -one or one to whole group in your, your classroom, to the credentialing process, to degree, to graduation, you get to know everyone very, very well. Um, we have expert faculty practitioners from public, charter, private, and Catholic schools. We do direct field work application of your theory and practice into local California um, K-12 schools. More people are joining us right now, so welcome. Our coursework is online because we all know that traffic in the greater Los Angeles area can be a bear. Uh, so the coursework is synchronous. It is offered so that you're all in that class together at the same time. So we're recreating that experience. 
And then your field work is in person at a school site. So the field work is not online. Our classes are late afternoon and early evening, Monday through Thursday. Um, our private school teachers who are getting their teaching certification um, have Saturday classes. There are tons of scholarships available for teachers today, primarily that Golden State Teacher Grant, which is up to $5,000, that's huge. There's teacher loan forgiveness programs. We'll get more into that a little bit later. And I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Piwan Hernandez. Thank you, Mary. So as you, call, you can all imagine, a lot of this work takes um, a lot of collaboration, coordination, um, teamwork, and we have one of, I will say I'm a little biased, but the best team that um, I'm proud to work with. But all of this to say, our efforts really do pay off um, beyond the significant impact that we have on the quality of teaching, uh, learning and leading, taking place in schools in the community. We're also very proud of the consistent recognition that we receive and honoring of our efforts. Um, so this slide here captures just a few of those recent recognitions. Um, to highlight a few of those is that we um, were the first SOE in the state of California to receive national accreditation through the Council for the Accreditation of Educator Preparation, also known by CAPE. And you'll soon learn in education, we love acronyms like an alphabet soup. Um, and currently we are one of only two schools in the entire state of California with CAPE accreditation. So we're very proud of that. Um, additionally, in a recent national ranking of Jesuit schools of education, we ranked second. In the state of California, we ranked second among all the private schools of education and we're just behind Stanford and USC. Um, additionally, LMU was ranked eighth amongst the top 10 of all schools of education in California. And ultimately LMU is ranked 71st or ultimately the top 5% of all schools of education in the country. And you all might be wondering why any of these rankings matter. And just to put that in a bit of perspective, we have close to about 5,300 colleges and universities in the United States. 1,200 of those have a school or college of education that offers a teacher preparation program. So that's a lot of teacher preparation pro programs. Um, and it's important to be able to distinguish ourselves amongst those which offer some of the best opportunities for high quality preparation. Um, so for being 71st out of 1,200 is something that we're extremely proud of. Um, and given that we're just over you know, a couple decades old, uh, we've accomplished quite a bit in a short amount of time. So it demonstrates that we have what it takes to help you be the best teachers you can be. Next one, Mary, please. So to give you an idea of the different credential certification programs we have, we offer a multiple subject credential program with a Master of Arts in Transformative Education. And this would serve those who want to teach at the elementary school level, which is generally grades K through five. We also have a single subject credential with a combined Master of Arts in Transformative Education. And the single subject credential is for those who wanna teach at the secondary school setting, which in California is grades six through 12. We also offer the Education Specialist Credential, which is a mild moderate disability um, authorization. And that can be combined with a Master of Arts in Special Education. We're also very excited to launch our first dual credential option with the elementary credential. So if anyone in this space is interested in earning both an education specialist and a multiple subject credential simultaneously, we will be able to offer that beginning this summer. Um, and so special education inclusive teaching will include both, the dual credential path will include both mild, moderate and elementary subject credentials. Um, the secondary credential is available, but you would have to take additional field work and coursework if you wanted to do the dual secondary and education specialist. Um, we also, to any of these credentials, you can add a teaching authorization for bilingual education and the languages that we currently offer are Spanish, Mandarin, or Cantonese. Um, and I think we talk about coursework for authorization a little bit later. 
So we have several pathways as well. So this is really important because when you do select a program, you will also need to select a pathway. So the first pathway is the student teaching pathway. And this is where your clinical practice or your hours in the field will be working in a student teacher, mentor teacher relationship. So where we place you in a setting and you will work with the teacher of record um, to earn your hours. This pathway is offered for the multiple subject, the single subject and the ed specialist credentials. Our next pathway is our private school teacher pathway where you complete your field work in your own classroom with your own students um, as you serve as teacher of record. This is an option for our multiple subject and our single subject candidates. Um, it also provides an option for individuals who might be interested in joining our place and CAST programs who work with students who serve in private Catholic schools um, across the state. And our final pathway is the intern pathway for those who have a full-time teaching position at a public or charter school. Again, in this scenario, you will complete your field work through your own classroom. And this is available to the multiple subject, single subject, and ed specialist credentials. And that includes the dual credential option. All right, uh, so this leads us to um, all of our programs are actually available to be combined credential with MA. Some of them are the credential with MA automatically, and that is the student teaching pathway for elementary and secondary ed uh, certification, um, the Play Score program, and which is a private school pathway. And then um, the special ed programs, um, I, I'm sorry, and then candidates in our special education programs, our CAST programs, and our intern resident programs can do a credential only program without the MA. So they complete the credential in one year. Um, now, you might ask, why would I wanna do a credential only program? Or why would I wanna have the, why would I wanna add the MA more importantly? And so I'm gonna just go through a few considerations for um, doing the combined program. Obviously, it deepens your knowledge and skills in the field. And in the case of transformative ed, it gives you a whole concentration area in a special subject area, which we'll look at a little bit later. You, when you have an MA, you are on a higher salary scale. Um, there are more leadership opportunities, be it in K-12 education or outside in any organization once you have an MA. Um, aspiring doctoral degree candidates sometime in your future, it's usually required that you have an MA degree first. The MA in transformative education is uh, 16 units beyond the credential. So in these cases, you do the bulk of your coursework already for that MA as the credential. So it's kind of, you know, a, almost a no brainer just to, while you're at it, do the additional coursework. So the MA in special ed is 12 additional units. Uh, that goes with the dual credential program as well. 12 additional units, you get the MA. Uh, you have five years to complete the MA. So if you don't wanna do it right immediately, if you apply first, you can defer the MA coursework for up to four years, really, because you've got to finish by the end before that fifth year. Uh, so you don't have to make that decision immediately. Credential only candidates, um, if you do, if you choose not to apply for the MA, you do have to apply a reapply. But if you apply for the MA up front, we don't require a second application later. This is a, an accreditation thing. You can't just automatically add on an MA program without reapplying. Um, federal loan limits do vary, uh, credential only versus MA plus credential. Same with partnership program scholarships for those that are in partnership programs. And so we just encourage everyone that is looking at that or considering the differences to really review it with an advisor. And um, we do, we can't make that decision for you. We do need candidates to make those decisions and to review those financial implications for their own independent scenarios, just to make sure you know you're doing what works best for you. So that's that. 
Next slide. Uh, here is the Master of Arts in Transformative Education. If all of your CTC requirements are finished, and we'll talk about that a little bit later slide, um, then the credential is in year one and the MA is in year two. And that is with all of our programs. Student teaching pathway, private pathway, and intern pathway. Credential in year one and MA in year two, if all those CTC requirements are met. And uh, here's the concentrations that I was talking about. So you select a focus, you take three classes in that concentration. Uh, we have digital learning, disability studies and inclusive education, educational policy and administration, language and culture. If you're doing bilingual authorization, you want to do the language and culture one, social, emotional, cultural learning and well being, and teaching English to speakers of other languages. So TESOL. And in the, you'll notice some of them have a double asterisk. Those are available. Um, the private school pathway is limited to those four, whereas the student teaching and the intern resident pathway is all the concentration. Then there's some capstone research and ta-da, you've equaled your 17 units. For the MA in special education, with or without the dual credential, it is the same exact amount of coursework, whether you're doing a dual credential or not. It just really depends on your subject matter competency. Um, it is a cohort program, online coursework, kind of the same thing we've done before. There isn't a private school pathway for special education because there just aren't, private schools tend not to have the resources available for us to do a really meaningful fieldwork experience for you in a private or Catholic school. And so that's why there's no special education on the private school pathway. Um, and I think the rest is all we've already covered. So we're just gonna move along. And then I don't remember if I'm covering this or if Dr. Piwan Hernandez is. I am? You are. I am. Well, there you go. You get me another little bit. Uh, so for our practitioner pathways, so practitioner means you're a full-time teacher of record already. You don't have to be, you can be a student teacher, but if you are and you aren't certified yet, um, this is, tends to be a lot in the private schools and those in a public or charter school that are an intern credential, SIP or a PIP. Um, so the intern residents, you're a full-time teacher of record, full-time teacher practitioner, a lot of those partnerships include, or some of those partnerships include Teach for America California, Green Dot, KIPP, Seneca, Puck, Wonderful, there's a charter school consortium. But we also take interns and residents from any school that aren't within those partnerships. So if you're already teaching or someone's offering you a teaching position with, for an intern credential, we do have that ability. If you are employed by a private school, and you don't have a teaching credential, you're a full-time teacher of record, then it's a private school uh, pathway. And you can either choose to take courses with public school teachers Monday through Thursday or with Catholic school teachers on Saturdays. Catholic school teachers are usually always Saturdays. Um, this includes our CAST program as well as our Place Corps program, which is a service teaching program where we give you the job. You don't have to have the job first. We actually give you the job of a full-time uh, Catholic school teacher. We provide you with housing and you live together and do professional development and attend classes with fellow place for students. So if you are looking for a very um, immersive teaching, learning, supportive experience and need housing, place for is a great opportunity. And then of course, we offer this to any private school teacher. You do not have to be or 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 intern resident, like I said, you do not have to be in one of our registered schools. It can be any school within the LA or Northern California area. And now I turn it over to Dr. Piwan Hernandez. Happy to take it on. Um, so just to review some of the Commission on Teacher Credentialing requirements. So these are requirements that everyone in the state of California has to complete in order to earn their um, teaching credentials. So first is a basic skills, which covers reading, writing, and math competencies. Um, there are several ways that someone can satisfy this requirement. The most common is through academic coursework that you may have taken in your undergraduate work. Maybe some of you have master's degrees already. Um, 
So you could accomplish this requirement through coursework, or you could also satisfy it through your SAT or ACT scores. Um, and if for whatever reason, those don't quite meet the mark, there is a exam, it's called the CBEST, that you can take um, to satisfy the requirement. And then there's also mix and match. So you could maybe combine some coursework with a portion of the CBEST exam. So there's multiple ways in which someone can satisfy this basic skills requirement. Next is your subject matter competency. And this basically um, confirms that you are able to teach the subject areas uh, within the credential area that you are pursuing. So again, most common um, is to satisfy through your bachelor's degree. So depending on the credential you're seeking, there are particular degrees that will automatically satisfy this subject matter competency. For multiple subjects, that would be a bachelor's in liberal studies. For single subject, it would be a bachelor's in an approved LMU subject area. For special education, it would follow the same um, rules, so to speak, as the multiple or single subject credential programs. Um, and then if you're doing the special education with the multiple subject credential, a bachelor's in liberal studies is what you would need there. Um, and if for some reason, your particular degree does it fall under one of those, then there's also an exam option for the subject matter competency, and that is called the CSET. So you would, in essence, take the CSET in the subject area that you plan to teach. For elementary, that would be in multiple subjects. And for single subject, it would be in whatever content area you plan to pursue your credentials. So that might be art, math, biology, whatever that specific topic is. And those same rules apply for special education. Um, next is a certificate of clearance, which is a fancy way of saying, get your fingerprints done. Um, and then we have the US Constitution. Again, there's multiple ways to satisfy that. You could um, satisfy it through a course that you may have taken. Um, if you're a CSU graduate, you've automatically satisfied this requirement as all CSU students take a specific course that automatically um, satisfies this, um, or alternatively, again, if those options are not available, there is an online exam that students can take to satisfy this constitutional requirement. So options, we all like options. Um, okay, so the various timelines, depending on how many of those requirements you might have at the beginning of your program. So option one, is students who will start in the summer two session. This is available to the student teaching pathway, the private school teacher pathway, as well as the intern resident pathway. So pretty much everyone. Um, in order to start in summer two, you need to have all of those CTC requirements that I just read off. Those need to be completed, passed, documented, prior to starting the program at the beginning of summer two. If you qualify for option one, you complete your credential by the end of year one in the program, and you'll complete your MA coursework by the end of year two. Now, let's say you might have some of those requirements, but maybe not all of them met, like maybe you have not met subject matter competency yet, and you need a little bit more time to get that done. Not a problem. You would fall under option two, where you would do a false start. Um, this is mostly an option for the student teaching pathway. Um, if you're going to be a, an intern or a resident, you have to have all of those requirements met up front or else you won't qualify for the intern pathway. So for anyone teaching full-time at a public or charter school, you have to have all those requirements met in order to meet the eligibility to have that sort of credential, um, which is an interim credential. So for anyone not having that at the start, you would do the student teaching pathway. You would start in the fall. Um, you would have then time to complete whatever requirements are outstanding. You would finish all of the credential coursework by the end of the first year and a half. And you would complete all of the master's coursework by the end of the full two years. So everyone reaches the same point and everyone will walk away with the same content at the end of two years. It just depends on how you, the order in which you take your coursework as a result of the requirements you have already met. 
Um, oh, I'll start at the top, you do the bottom. Okay. Um, so the added authorizations, which we spoke about earlier, as well as some certificate options. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we do have the bilingual added teaching authorization in those three languages. Um, in order to earn the authorization, there is additional coursework that you need to take. Um, this can be completed as part of the Master of Arts in Transformative Education. You would select the focus or concentration area that has the language courses. So you can do that as part of the master's program. Um, so there's the coursework, and then you'd also have to take an additional language exam through the CSET in whichever specific of the three languages you're trying to add the authorization in. Correct. Uh, we also offer a certificate of inclusive teaching. Um, so this is covered in the concentration for disability and inclusive teaching or some of the coursework is covered there. Um, but it's also available just on its own. Sometimes, uh, particularly private school teachers that decide they don't want to get a credential, but they would like to learn a little bit more about in being more inclusive teacher for students with mild to moderate support needs within the classroom, then a program for the certificate in inclusive teaching uh, might be a good option for that. Okay, and really important to note is that California has a two-tiered credentialing system. So everyone starts out by earning their preliminary credential. There's no program in the state of California that will help you do both at the same time. You got to start with your preliminary credential first. And the way you accomplish that is by completing a university-approved program which includes academic coursework, as well as clinical practice fieldwork hours. You will have to complete a California teacher performance assessment. Um, there's a few that are available as options. We at LMU have opted into the ED TPA. So everyone would have to complete that assessment and we support you through the program to do that. Um, there's the non-coursework requirements, which we talked about in a couple previous slides. You, the elementary candidates, will have to complete a RECA exam, which is based on literacy formation and how students learn to read. So whether you're doing the elementary only program or the special education dual elementary program, you need to take the RECA. Um, we at the university, once you've completed all those things, we authorize a, or we recommend you for the credential to the state of California. And that will authorize you to teach in public and public charter schools. Um, once the CTC approves that recommendation, you have your credential and it's valid for five years. So that's step one, that's tier one. Once you've accomplished your preliminary credential, the state then gives you five years to do what's called clear your credential. And this is a additional form of mentoring support to help candidates once they're in the field teaching full-time without the support of a teacher preparation program um, because although some of you might take the practitioner pathway or the intern pathway and you'll be teaching in a classroom you're technically under the advisement of an on-site support provider so another teacher or an administrator at your school site that will come in to guide you along the way and you're also going to have support of a fieldwork instructor from LMU from our program. So that happens in the preliminary phase. Once you're in the clear credential phase, you've completed your credential program. So at this point, you're on your own. You're teaching full time, perhaps for the first time um, at a school site. So you're required to clear a credential and that will happen through an induction program. Depending on where you're hired, this may happen through your school site and or your school district. Um, if for some reason, which a lot of times some charter schools and private schools don't have the amount of funding it takes to run an in-house induction program, then you would seek a program out through an LA County Office of Education, or there are a lot of um, universities that are also offering induction programs. Many of them are also online. So you could be based here in Southern California and be clearing your credential through a program in San Francisco. Um, it's really at your discretion um, which route you choose. 
Although I will say that if you do secure your first full-time teaching position at a public school and they have an induction program, then you will be required, um, as part of your signing, as part of your contract, you're required to complete induction through them. Um, so it's all done in-house. Um, you'll have someone on site that will help you, but that's really only an option through our public school system. All right, let's get over to admissions. Um, and I did want to mention too, I know, you know, we talked about a bunch of different pathways and things and I mentioned right up front, but I, I wasn't entirely clear. And that is the coursework is the same pretty much. I mean, the coursework is the same for every pathway. The only difference is the field work. But so say you started doing student teaching in your first semester, you completed that portion of the student teaching, and then a teaching position landed in your lap, and you decided to take it, you can switch to the intern practitioner program or private school program in your second semester. So in your first semester, maybe you did student teaching, your second semester, you switch over or vice versa. You're an intern, you decide this is too much. I want to go into student teaching. I want more support. We can switch around because the only difference is field experience. So you lose none of your coursework, very flexible options. We work with you and figure out something that works. So that said, let's see how we get you admitted. Um, it's pretty straightforward. There's an online application. The hardest question on the first page of the application is which pathway, private, student teaching, or intern residence? So we do get the wrong answer to the question quite a bit. We do help you through it, but it does help if you know that up front, we're always here to ask questions of. Um, there is a personal statement of intent in there. The, um, there's also an info packet that you can get that in advance, but you can also do the application online and see those questions. Um, we do require one set of official transcripts. You need to have a bachelor's degree from a regionally accredited institution in the United States, which most are, but every now and then we come across a really tiny little school um, that is more niche and doesn't have that accreditation. So that's why we mentioned that. Um, international, if you went to a university that had an internet and got a bachelor's degree from an international university, we do need those transcripts evaluated for equivalency. We would want to talk to you more about that, so make sure that you don't order the wrong thing. So um, if that is your case, just reach out to us. Um, letters of recommendation. The system sends a link to your recommendator. Recommender. I'm having trouble with English here today. Um, and then they, in turn, just upload that letter uh, so that it remains confidential. Uh, current resume and then a virtual interview. Obviously, the CTC program requirements that Dr. Juan Hernandez talked about, some of the deadlines vary by pathway, um, and they do affect when you do various pieces of fieldwork. The more you have done up front, the better. It means you're clear sailing. It's when you don't, you can still enroll. We're just going to switch your courses around a little bit until you get to those field experience. Um, private has a little bit more leeway than uh, student teaching and intern because, of course, as she said, public school, you actually are not allowed to enter a classroom without most of those, or for interns, all of those requirements for student teachers most, right? The first semester? Or Say all? that again. I was coughing. I'm sorry. Sorry, it's okay. Student teachers all in order to do field work in their first semester? Have to have it all, yes. Yeah. All right, so uh, RECA is for elementary and special ed students only. You don't actually do that, as she said, until later in the program after you take your literacy course. It's pretty much 100% pass rate on that one, so. Um, all right, a good deal. Uh, tuition is this year, 1462 a unit. It goes up a little bit every year. As with any institution, we haven't heard what it is gonna be yet for this coming year, 23, 24. Um, but we do know that it is a great time for federal aid for teachers. The Golden State Teacher Grant uh, gives you up to $20,000 in high need areas. For high need, 
elementary teachers, math, science, special ed, and bilingual. There may be some more listed at the Golden State Teacher website. If you have the opportunity tonight to see the financial aid um, presentations specifically by financial aid counselors, we highly recommend it. They'll be able to answer those kinds of questions in much more detail. There are some agreements for that with you working in a high priority or a priority listed school or approved school. But in, in, if you're in the LA area, most schools are. It just kind of depends. Um, you just have to make sure. There's also the Federal Loan Forgiveness Program for teachers, uh, which is a pretty nice. You take out federal loans, you get them um, uh, reduced or, or forgiven completely after a period of time and in a certain period of time in a priority school. Again, you need to look at those regulations. Um, don't take our word for it. These are things that they do change them from time to time. So you wanna make sure that you know the most up-to-date information on those. We have School of Ed scholarships available for some of our programs and some of our partnerships. So if you're going into one of those specialized ones, make sure you reach out and, and talk to us about those. Um, if you are a city year alumnus, we give you a 30% discount off of tuition. If you are a Catholic school educator, we give you a 30% discount off of tuition. And then there's more if you explore them at the website listed there. Um, those that are eligible for federal financial aid are required to do the FAFSA. And then there is the financial aid uh, session. We'll see a little bit more about that tonight. So we, I, we have a saying in the school of that is anyone that's willing to give you money, we will take it and put it towards your thing. Like, there is nothing, no such thing as bad money. Money is good for you. So a lot of scholarships go unclaimed. Uh, we really want you to be able to claim that money. Um, I'm going to get your to your question in just a second here. Um, so these are the sessions tonight. 6 p.m. is the financial aid session. If on that open house website, the link is there. You can log into that. There is a graduate student session at 6.30. This is a great way to get involved um, and have colleague to colleague, graduate student to graduate student experiences. And then for students that are you know, have international citizenship, then that session is at 7 p.m., uh, which will cover student visas. And then of course, I'm gonna take questions now, but always feel free to ask us more questions. Um, there's our website, our email address is highlighted in red. You can take a picture of this page. You got our cute little QR code with our LMU line in the middle. Follow us on social media. We're active on Instagram as well as many others. Um, and here's our information. And now I will take questions. And unfortunately, iPhone, I cannot see your name because it just says iPhone, but I'm gonna go to you. And um, you have your hand up. Hi, I'm so sorry. I, I did it from my phone. I didn't know that it said iPhone, but I- That's okay. Um, my name is Carmen. I'm so sorry. Hi, Carmen. Um, hi, how you doing? So I, I'm like literally, I'm all in. I just obviously want to make sure that I get as much help as possible. So obviously um, I, I'm a currently a Catholic teacher right now, but I also did city year before. And so- I was wondering, because I saw that it said Catholic, being a Catholic teacher, but also city year, but they kind of were in the same line. So I was wondering, could I, would I get both or would it have to be like one or the other, if that makes sense? It is one or the other. Uh, sorry about that. That would be awesome. No, that's though. okay. <laughs> I, I just had to make sure, you know, yeah. and then um, my last thing is just saying, um, so if I got a grant from city year, would I still get like the 30% off? So like, does that make sense? Like if I got a grant from them on the side that I would be paying for school for, but also like the 30% off, would they cancel each other out or? Well, uh, that's a good question. They're giving you the money directly. Um, yes. Yeah. Then we don't know about it. Right. <laughs> oh, so if it would have to go through them, then it would be different. Is that what it's saying? That's what it is? Yeah, I think we give you a 30% no matter what. So I think if there was an additional grant, that's additional and it's treated separately. Oh, okay. And then just my last question. I'm so sorry. I appreciate your time. Yeah. Um, so 
I'm the kind of person where I need as much help as possible. I need like everything. And so there's, are there any resources on campus? Obviously I already know that we're going to be working in a group. And so I can utilize my group members, but um, also is there like other things within the school that I can like do for help? Cause obviously I think about my, like I went to high school a little while ago, obviously I'm still young. So it wasn't that, that long ago in college, but I didn't utilize my time there as much. And so I'm, I want to get better at my writing and different things. So I want to know if that there's like a place either on campus or online that I can access to be able to get better at, for example, my writing or my speaking or like anything in general. Absolutely. Great question. I'm going to let Dr. Piwan Hernandez answer that one and then I'll piggyback on what she says. Thank yes. You. So that's a great question. And there are a plethora of resources on campus. So we have um, whatever is available technically to our undergraduates is also available to our graduate population. So we have an academic resource center that is available for exactly what you just mentioned. They can help with writing, they'll review your papers before they're due, um, and they have um, drop-in sessions and there's videos online. I mean, you almost have to not engage to not do well. Um, right. So we have them. You have access to our entire library, whether you're on campus or off campus. Um, there are Lions for Learning. There's tutoring centers if you felt you wanted more one-on-one. -on -one. So there's plenty of support. Um, what I would say is if for whatever reason you're having a hard time finding them, you would want to engage with your program advisor and they would be able to connect you with whomever you would need to talk to to get that ball rolling. Yay. Yay, thank you so much. I do appreciate you. And oh, likewise, choice. happy and, to have you. And a lot of those um, resources, including the writing tutors and the library resources are available online as well, as she said. Yeah, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. And I look forward to maybe seeing you on campus or like getting help from you personally. And so I do appreciate you. And I'm so, so, so excited, but also nervous and scared too. Right, well. <laughs> All normal. We, we, yeah, we hear you. We hear you, Carmen. Thank you. Um, and Annie has a question. And Annie, you are on mute. So if you are talking, we are unable to hear you. Sorry, can you hear me now? Can yes. you guys hear me now? Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Annie and um, uh, um, my full name is Anila Zahir. And, you know, I've been um, a great fan of Royal Marymount University. It's so close to my house. I love the campus. Um, you know, I've been in the education um, uh, field for the past three years now. I, I started working as a volunteer at my daughter's school. Um, and then, um, you know, all of a sudden they offered me a position for a para educator. Um, so I started working with the with the high school and um, SMM USD. Um, my question is, I have a bachelor's degree in engineering and I have a master's degree in business administration, uh, but uh, both my degrees are evaluated as well as the transcripts as well. Um, and I, 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 I want to have, um, I want to have, I want to know um, how can I become a teacher, a full-time teacher and start working as a teacher in the school district, whether it's LAUSD or it's SMMUSD or it's a private school. But I'm just wondering whether any credit is given to my, my degrees or not. Um, because I feel that the SMM USD district, it's it's uh, very biased, and uh, they really don't pay the HR personnel or who, whoever is sitting over there. I think they don't pay attention to any of your uh, information, or even whatever you have submitted to them. Uh, you know, they just treat you as a number, and um, uh, and as I can see that you know many LA USD schools, as well as the SMM USD schools they don't have good teachers. And, mm -hmm. you know, most, most of them are out of, uh, you know, most of them go out, you know, they don't show up. There are substitute teachers over there, you know, and you know, okay, you, Annie, when you go to yeah. a class, it's like- um, Annie, I can answer some of your questions. Um, yes, Ms. Mary. So, yes. uh, so uh, obviously we don't control the school districts. So when they hire, they're hiring for an emergency need. 
Um, so if they have an emergency need for someone with a background, then that's what they're looking for. But as a general rule, they do like, they do prefer to hire credentialed teachers. That's for public schools. You would have to go to their websites like it sounds like you've been doing. Unfortunately, again, we have no control over that. Um, and, you know, teaching has been affected by the, by the world events as much as every industry has. Yeah. So totally. I think That's that you're going to see that. Now for private mm -hmm. schools, um, you can go to the Archdiocese website where they have their openings or any private school that has their openings online. And it's just if they're looking for a teacher, or, you know, pro I'm guessing that you want to teach math or is that correct? Yes, I can uh, definitely be a STEM teacher. I was, um, I was even, uh, I was even asked by Cal State Northridge uh, to participate in their program. But you, you know, their secondary elementary um, uh, mm -hmm. director, um, mm -hmm. I, I, he kind of stepped on on my scholarship program, and um, saying that it's a three three way process and this and that, this and that. You know, Any, and yeah, kind so of, I, you know, demotivated me. Um, you know, I where know. everybody demotivated me, where everybody was starting it because you know, um, I, I am, um, I, 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 I mean, I'm just thinking, where is my investment going on? Whatever right. education I have brought, brought in right. with me, and I have an international experience. I'm a U.S. citizen, and um, why am I being treated this way? So when I saw, I came to Loyola Marymount a couple of years back. I was very happy with the, with some programs that I was interested in at that time. Um, to be, uh, you know, that was that time my my mindset was on the uh, engineering right. side in, in in the engineering side. Okay, but Annie, then obviously Annie, with the best Annie, of time. Yes, Annie. Yes, Annie. Hi. So you have such a unique situation. What I really want to do is set up a one on one with you, so we can look Thank at your you. transcripts and get you some more help. Thank so, you. Please, please, please. I, please. Down your I name. definitely can be a very good asset to any of the schools. Okay. If they do not want to utilize my skills, it's up to them. However, I'm ready to give any exams, but this teaching credential program is more than the way, I mean, it's like three years, four years. I mean, it's like a PhD program. Man, I can do a PhD in that way. I mean, um, right. I they know. should give me some credit to what I have on my on my on my resume or whatever. Well, let's I take have a look at you. Day. Let's take. A, I'll reach out to you uh, individually, um, yeah. separately. We'll reach out to you. Um, so we have yeah. another question from John. John. Yes, I'm actually a graduate of Santa Clara up north, and I moved down south, and I'm teaching currently. I'm also a STEM teacher, engineering and computer science. And I was wondering if um, I already have a master's of education and okay. I'm from a residency program up north. I'm wondering if I can just complete the credential program and if whether or not uh, any credential courses may transfer over um, from previous programs. Just curious. Yeah, I'm going to let Dr. Piwan Hernandez answer that one. So we can take a look at your transcript. Um, the challenge with credential courses is that every school of education has been approved to teach and offer the courses in a certain way. So what happens is wherever you took your master's coursework, they may have packaged it differently. So what you might have is a part of this class and a part of that class would add up to one of our classes but, or vice versa. So it's really hard to transfer coursework. We definitely take a look but I wanna be fully transparent and that it's it's difficult to count coursework from other programs um, for the credential. But we can, definitely, we can definitely look to see what we would need, our syllabi from all of the coursework that you've taken um, because that's, that's the only way that we can really compare. Right. And the coursework, your credential coursework was in the last five or so years? Yes, that's right. Yeah, um, then as long as those programs are similar, it makes it a lot easier. It's when the course, it's when our program is so different. If our program is really different from Santa Clara, that it makes it a little bit harder. But definitely that would be something you want to do a one on one appointment with us so we can look oh, at I'm your sorry. transcript and, and do all that. So I'm sorry, I actually got my MBA at Santa Clara University. Um, I didn't do my credential work at Santa Clara, but um, from another institution. Oh, okay. But curious. again, it was in the last five, 
to seven yes, it years? Was. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. That's it's the time. It's the timing it's that's the time, more right. important. Yeah. <laughs> is is your program? Sorry, I missed something because I've been preparing dinner for my uh, two young girls and uh -huh. for uh, after school event. I'm just curious. Does the credential and master's program go together at LMU, and um, or can I get just do the credential only? Or you can. Uh, it, yeah, you're already teaching. You said you can do the credential only. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And then, so SOE info at lmu.edu, I will also make a note of this too, um, to reach out to you, and then we can meet, uh, sign you up, get you aligned with an advisor to look at your um, credential coursework to your transcripts. So you want to get, um, both for you and for Annie, um, you want to make sure you have a copy of it uh, for our appointments, and then we can help guide you a little bit better once we see those course transcripts. Any other Thank questions? Thank you so much, Mary. That is, Miss Mary, that is, uh, ma'am, so, so helpful. Good, um, I'm glad. Thank any, you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any questions from anyone else? So how would we get in touch with, um, uh, you know, how can we send our information transcripts or one-on-one -on -one meeting? How would that work? Should I come to the campus? Uh, what we do, we do our meetings um, virtually. And uh, so here I have the screen uh, on screen again, soeinfo at lmu.edu is our email address. Okay, I'm um, gonna take a screenshot. Perfect. And um, if you actually click on the QR, if you have a QR code reader, um, we can get you an info packet as well. And um, sometimes it takes a little while when you want your, when you're sending us transcripts, there's a certain amount that I can do, um, but usually I have to pull in an advisor, an academic advisor or a program director to look at it a little bit more closely. It depends on if it's an easy situation or a hard situation and everyone's unique. So don't feel bad about that. Um, no, no, it would be an easy unique. situation. I can assure you of that. I have been a <laughs> I'd been a great student. And trust me, I joined the school district only for the sake of my little child, um, you know, because she goes to public school. And I just wanted to make sure that she gets my help and support support in any ways possible. And right. obviously being a single pay, I mean, obviously being a mother, um, you know, um, I, I wanted to understand the school system as well, you know, so that my daughter has that in in-home support available as well you know i mean i i hear you and uh -huh. we have about four more minutes and actually some of you might be going to other sessions at five o'clock uh so feel free to jump off or stay on if you have a few more questions so we can be with you here uh dr yuan has to leave for her session she's doing another session at five so but i will be here if anyone has any uh more follow-up questions and thank you all for joining us. Appreciate it.